Risk Management Project, Supplemental Lecture 2, Using Clearwater IRM Analysis. Here, you're going to identify all assets that are associated with the organization given, as long as the assets have value. In this phase, the first concept you must understand is what an information asset is exactly, within the control of the organization as well. Traditionally, information assets include anything that you store, process, or transmit, along with the systems needed to support these activities. This software that we're using simplifies the analysis somewhat. A few assumptions. Before, before we go further into information assets, let's look at a few assumptions that apply to the risk management project. All key applications store data on a dedicated server, not on local systems. All servers are located in a secure server room. All key data and databases are copied in real time, not batch, to a shared storage area in the server room. All key applications and associated data are backed up weekly to a shared cloud service using encryption. All employees are strictly prohibited from storing key application data on removable media or from removing hard copies from the organization. Finally, remote access is only allowed via virtual private network or VPN on organization-owned equipment. We already went through some examples of information and information assets. Here we look in more detail at what exactly an information asset is and why it's important. When determining information assets, we look at the information that our organization collects, uses, and or manages, and information that needs to be protected. By law or regulation or policy, for instance, an example here is personally identifiable health care data, which must be protected according to HIPAA standards. Violations for releasing PII health care data can can receive large fines even when the release was unintentional and when controls were placed on the information asset. We do need to know if we are collecting, using, and or managing the information asset or does a third party handle it. Finally, what technology assets do we need to collect, use, and manage valuable information? Those are information assets that must be considered. We know that information assets must have some value. If not, why protect them? Information assets include systems that use or analyze data or information, the systems that store the information, and the systems that transmit the information. As information security managers, we must make sure that the data is protected as required at all times that our organization handles the information. For the IRM analysis approach in your project, databases and applications are information assets while hardware systems are media. Here are a few examples of project information assets. Users at their desk use company-provided PCs, laptops, tablets, cell phones, etc. These users have certain access rights given their position. Your own users present the most threat to your information assets. They may unintentionally make information assets insecure or they may get mad and intentionally do it. Thus, you must have controls on the valuable information assets and users and their technology have to be considered in the overall scheme of things. 
You also have applications, SAP for managing the organization, for instance, or patient portals, or Microsoft Office, or web browsers, publishing programs, photo applications, etc. These applications may use information assets that, again, must be protected. The user's applications and databases are considered information assets, while the on-site server and off-site cloud are considered media by the IRM application. Most organizations have databases, and large organizations, governmental agencies, and healthcare providers may have very large databases. Some of these information assets are considered to be very valuable and must be secure from risk. Remember that databases and applications are information assets, while servers are considered media. The server may be on-site or off-site and likely stores information assets that must be protected. There is significant overlap and sharing across information assets, and you must account for that in your risk management plan. For instance, Users view patient information on their desktop PC. Applications may be viewed to access databases in order to view the patient information. So that transaction requires both the application and the database to be secure. The changes to patient data that are sent to the database are then stored on a storage area network and copied in real time to a secure organizational server. This server contains very valuable information assets. It's clearly a critical link in securing information assets. Finally, the information is sent off-site on a weekly basis to a shared cloud service. The applications are also updated, so there could technically be a line from the app to the cloud. You can see the, that most information assets are linked in different ways on different applications with restrictions on access and with storage on-site and off-site, both of which must be secured to protect the information assets. Let's look at information assets and provide some examples. For this example, we'll use an employee database, something that all of you are probably familiar with. The employee database is a data asset which is accessed and used through the HR information systems. It includes transactions such as time management, payroll, benefits, and performance review. These information assets use the media listed here. The media for equipment and backup includes the HR server, which is located in a secure server room, the SANS backup server on site, the off site cloud, and employee desktops and our laptops. Note that all external media or bring your own devices are strictly prohibited. That simplifies the analysis for you. Also note that you can use the combined desktop laptop option for, to further simplify your analysis. So let's look at some specifics. First, you need to download the Word document associated with the project. In that document, you'll find a set of tables. You need to sit down and think through what should go into the tables before you get into the software. What are the information assets you're going to put in the table? It's best to sit down, think about it, and brainstorm what you're going to fill into the documents you've downloaded. Have a good plan in place prior to beginning. Let's first look at the asset inventory table, part of the Word document you downloaded. First, you need to list the assets. For instance, the employee database could be an information asset. For the media, if you remember, that's the desktop, laptop, or the HRIS, or media could be the organizational SANS, the cloud backup. So that's those four. 
The owner would be the individual authorized to create and assign rights to the information assets. So, for our employee database, the HR senior manager is responsible for establishing rules for authorized access. Note that all of the owners will not, not, not be the CIO. That's a common mistake. The CIO doesn't create and assign access rights, although they may take the HR senior manager's information and make it happen for the database. But ultimately, it's the HR service manager who is authorized to provide access to those individuals, and nobody else, who need access. The data belongs to the business manager most closely associated with the information asset. With that in mind, the Chief Operations Officer is responsible for information assets related to operations and production types of information assets. The CIO, in turn, is responsible for IT information, and you continue an analyzing information assets based on the business manager most closely associated with the information asset. The last column is labeled classification. That's leftover military nomenclature, which could be top secret, secret, etc. If you look through the book and get a feel for different classification schemes used by organizations, you then classify according to the scheme you selected or come up with your own. As long as you define what you mean, use a classification scheme that seems to be a good fit for describing the information assets, then that is suitable. This brings us to the asset classification scheme table, another portion of the Word document you download. Here, you list your classifications like top secret, secret, confidential, for internal use only, public, etc. I advise you to use no more than four levels unless there's a good business reason to do so. Most organizations only need about three levels, some sort of high-level classification, something like internal use only, public, may be released, for example, in a brochure or online. Once you complete this table, you return to the prior table and classify all of your information assets. Thus, our employee database might be classified as internal use only or something to that effect. Our planning database, where we store our strategic plans, however, might be classified as confidential or classified or restricted or whatever terms you established in the asset classification table. For this asset inventory table, it has 20 rows. I challenge you to find as many information assets as possible and complete the table using that information. There's no magic num number, somewhere greater than 10 and less than 100. Then you're going to determine how important each information asset is to your organization. There's a formula you will use to establish importance and you'll input that information into the software. Ultimately, you will rank order your assets to find out which ones are the most valuable. Once you have the criteria and weights listed, you take the information assets and add them to the table one by one. You need to find criteria that are important to the organization and that will help you evaluate the information assets. Value to the organization, cost to replace, all of those kinds of things you would list at the bottom of the table under criteria description. List the criteria and provide a brief description of each. Then you'll replace CRIT1, which is criteria 1. You do that for each of the criteria you create. For each information asset, you then examine the relevance of each of the criteria to that particular information asset. The values, however, do not have to add to 1 or 100%. You examine the, the information asset and see how much the criteria apply to each of those assets. 
Ultimately, you're going to multiply the weight times the value to get a ranked order list. I've included for download a weighted table ranking spreadsheet. This already got the calculations involved there. So use it. It makes it easier for you. It will automatically multiply the criteria by the cell weight to help you rank the information assets identified. When you add it up, you're going to get a value between 0 and 100 in the total column for each information asset. Then you determine the relative weight of each of the criteria from most to least important. If you have five criteria, you're going to divide 100 points so that the sum of the relative weights of the criteria equals 100 for each information asset label. Five criteria is the most common, with four indicating you need to rethink what's important in your organization, with less than four indicating you need to rethink what's important to your organization and why. You may have six or more, but I suggest keeping it simple and going with four, five, or six criteria. Then you populate the importance of the criteria listed. You could take the easy way out and list 20 points for all of them, but that suggests a lack of understanding of the organization. Instead, you may have 30 points for criteria one, 15 points for criteria two, 40 points for criteria three, 10 for criteria four, and five for criteria five, which sums to 100. The higher weights indicate the importance of the criteria to the organization. For an example, in your book, refer to Table 8.2, Asset Valuation Tables. The weighted score tells you the most valuable information asset you have. In reality, you're going to end up with 15, 20, or even more information assets. If you make changes to the downloaded spreadsheet, you will have to recheck the formulas to make sure that they still work properly. So we, we've done our weighted asset ranking, and we know which items are most important on a scale of 0 to 100. For instance, we may define values of 80 or plus to be rated as a 5 are very critical. 60 to 60 to 79 values rated as a 4 or critical. 40 to 59 rated as 3 or very important. 20 to 39 rated as 2 or somewhat important. 0 to 19 related as 1 or not important. You're going to need the relative weighted values when you actually get into the software. Make sure to complete the importance column of the spreadsheet after you determine the value of each information asset from 0 to 100. The very last thing you will do is sort the table on the total column, sort in descending order so that your most important information asset is at the top. There is a software tutorial that describes how you enter everything into the application. To summarize, review the Word template prior to even looking at the software. Complete the forms and the weighted analysis. Enter information into the application. Follow all the guidelines given. And you're finished.